the police were not there for me. They were there for the other tenants, for the tenant that wasn't even present in the house. God, I couldn't even sleep that night. Living single in the UK is very, very boring. This is me trying to overcome one fear to talk about the other fears. Living alone in the UK as a migrant has been a journey filled with unique fears and challenges. Fears that have disturbed my peace of mind for some time now. But for some reasons, having spoken to few migrants around me, they have not really thought about these fears that I feel and are just realizing it after speaking with them. Well, today I'm going to share with you or talk about something a bit more personal about the fears that runs through me living alone in the UK. For those who live outside of the UK to grasp the concept of my fears or the concept of this video, you must understand that UK is an individualistic country than what we know in other countries, for example, in African countries. Okay, people in the UK are less invested in communities. People over here mind their businesses. People over here literally do everything by themselves, unlike what we know back home in Africa. As migrants, we must adapt into their system to be able to work with them, to be able to live with them. Okay, so now that you understand or you have an idea, that is if you didn't know before, let's dive into some of the fears that I have living alone in the UK. The fears are not in any order, but the first, the very first one is indeed my major fear living in the UK, which is the thought of something happening to me. The thought of me passing away, like dying and nobody even noticing for like days or weeks. Like thinking about it just drives me crazy. It may sound morbid, but it's a real concern if you're living alone in the UK. I saw a post one day in a group that I belong. It was an ID card with somebody's picture on it. And the main purpose of the post was that they were looking for somebody who knows that person. The, the guy in the ID was dead in the hospital and they couldn't trace anyone. They knew nobody about the guy. And this was in the hospital. Imagine this unfortunate event happening to you in your room. It doesn't matter whether you live alone in a house or you live with flatmates or co tenants in a house. I live with co-tenants in a house the only time we see ourselves is in the communal space and the only communal space in my house is the kitchen and the conservatory okay among my co-tenants only two people say hi or respond to hi the rest are not and among these two people only one of them engage me in conversation okay and vice versa only one of them I mean, respond to conversations, okay? And that also is limited to just the communal space. That means that if you are not in the communal space, you don't get anybody to talk to, nobody cares about you unless you are in the communal space. And that is if you even met that particular person. The rest are very individualistic. They are not willing to share their personal space. And that is not new. If you understand the system in the UK, you understand that people value their personal space so much. And these things that are that are fears to some of us are normal to them. Okay. But of course, I'm not a white person. I'm not British. So my way of thinking, regardless of the fact that I'm trying to adapt, is still different. I hardly get a knock on my door. Neither do I knock on the other person's door. That is how we live. I have coincidentally met a flatmate twice on the staircase, struggling to catch his breath. He couldn't move and I had to help. The question is, what if he was in his room? How and where could he have gotten help? And this could have happened to me, or this could happen to me anytime, anywhere. It is scary, okay? Even as we live here, when your friend or a family member calls, you mark them on three times and you do not pick. Like, 
they assume that you are busy with work and i don't blame them because that is the lifestyle over here it's all about work and we hardly even think about the reality and that is scary to be honest especially those of us that live alone those of us that live single single life i mean i don't mean single single even if you're married and your spouse your family is not here you are living alone people just leave you to it and expect you to call back what if you never call back maybe i'm just overthinking but like these thoughts are really crazy like they are major fears in my head and this applies to when you need emergency um health service like when you fall really ill and you need somebody to help you now you're living alone how do you get that help that is a major concern can we just make it a habit to check in regularly with our friends and families especially those who live abroad like uk can we kind of like get close contact of our friend or close contact of our family member in case we are not hearing from our friend our family member there is somebody else to call to check on you when it comes to some of these fears those back home you don't experience it because there are so many people around to help you we don't have that here okay and the way the system is it gets our brains busy that we even fail to think about some of these things but they are really scary and we are in fears please check on us secondly is the fear of being cremated after i pass away i know i'm talking about dying whatever like don't get me wrong it took me courage it took me to kind of like overcome that fear to be able to talk to you about my fears that's why they are fears okay i mean fears mostly are not nice things are they i belong to a group that recently they had to bury may his soul rest in peace they had to bury one of our colleagues he died here and of course friends and family had to support in different ways financially emotionally in person in all kinds of ways okay but despite the grief it was reassuring at least to me knowing that the guy got to be buried and not cremated i remember mentioning to some people during that period that if i die they should please bury me like they buried this guy i do not want to be cremated and for those of you that do not understand or do not know what cremation is cremation is when somebody dies and they use intense heat to burn or turn the remains of the dead person into ashes so usually the family of the disease fetch some of the ashes for remembrance or whatever but there are many factors that contribute into um dead people being cremated it could be their wish it could be for financial reasons different reasons why people choose that option but from where i grew up it's a no-no and where i am now where this is common it has become a fear to me and don't even be afraid watching this video i want to keep telling you because as i'm making this video i'm a bit shaky and like i said it took me to overcome one fear to make this video of fears that's why it's a bit scary or whatever shall i say yeah thirdly the fear of living with tenants that might be troublesome or make the living space unsafe for me and i'm not even wrong to have these fears because i have experienced two terrifying incidents i'm going to share one incident now and one later in the video okay on one of these incidents i think i was off work and usually when i'm off work i have a lie-in for the mornings as I was in bed on this fateful day, I heard a very intense sound like the rooftop, the rooftop was falling. Of course it wasn't the rooftop, it was our main door. I didn't hear the sound like boom, 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 boom. No, it was like once and it was that intense. Mind you, our main door is a double door and it was locked. It was the police and apparently they had their warrant and whatever they were doing at my house must have been very critical 
I honestly didn't know when I got off the bed and I opened the door immediately. Like I thought something was happening and these guys were very alert. One of them spotted me. I didn't even know I wasn't wearing something appropriate. They wanted to like question me. The rest were already upstairs to the particular tenant they were in for. And once I came back to my room, like I was so confused upstairs here. I heard the same sound. I don't know what they are using to knock the doors. Over here, whether you are directly involved in doing something bad or not, once you are spotted around the incident or you live with the person that they are looking for and they see you eye to eye, they must caution you. They will take your details and they will caution you. That is how you can get into trouble just by having somebody troublesome by you. Do you understand? So if you are in a shit yourself, you are going to be caught because of somebody else trouble that experience was terrifying i already knew this because that wasn't my first time i had lived in one house that i experienced something similar so i'm going to share this later in the video so i knew anyway they are going to kind of like caution me what's your date of bed i mean have you seen this person blah 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 you just know it's protocol it's not your fault it's the landlord that recruits these guys okay they recruit all of you so how will you know that this person is bad this person is this Besides, you all live solo lives in your in the house. So I feel like this particular thing is just unavoidable until you live alone in your own house. But living with tenants, you just can't help it. Number four is the fear of somebody invading my personal space, like my room, my food. I mean, anything personal. We all know how this place is. Like I live in a share house. I share the kitchen. I share the microwave. I share the fridge. Literally, I share everything in the communal area. So you cannot help it, but think that somebody might invade your privacy or your personal space one day. I remember when I recently went home, my auntie said to me that don't leave your food unattended. If you are cooking, make sure you stay there till you finish cooking. Don't, don't, don't put your food in a fridge that somebody has access. Guard yourself very well. But I can't do that, auntie. It's not possible. Like, I can't finish cooking and have to wait for the food for like hours to cool down before I pack it. Even if I do that, okay, I'm packing it in the fridge. And I share the fridge as well. So how am I able to do that? I can't do that. And that leaves me with a fear of somebody invading my food. Okay, that is what. The other incident I promised to share, I remember sometime I rented this particular place. I was again living with tenants, okay. And one night, this time around it was in the night. As I was sleeping like 12 midnight, I heard this sound and over there I was living upstairs. When I'm sleeping, I make sure my room, my my curtains are closed and my lights are off because I don't like sleeping with the lights on. So when I heard the noise, again, I was up. I didn't know how and when I was up. So I got scared because that day I was the only one living in the house. They had left. So I decided to peek through the window just to know what is going on these guys were alert like they are trained oh my god all their senses are active just when i peeped through the curtains very very like i peeped they were able to spot me yeah come down come down come down when i went down like they were there with their gadgets whatever i went down and i i opened the door one was talking to me and the other one was behind. The other one was even carrying camera. You know how big their camera was? Like, I was so scared. What is going on? Before I even, I could realize they were upstairs, like, I mean, surveying all the rooms. They were even in my room, trying to get an ID, like ID that I possess. Funny enough, I didn't have my ID cards. My passport and my um, BRP, I had sent them for my driver's license card. So I said to them that I've sent them for my driver's license. I don't know if they believe that or not, but I had Royal Mail receipt. So I showed to them that I just sent them out. This is it. But I have my work ID, which is this. So 
I mean, of course, they were so hyperactive for what I don't know what they had, whatever they were looking for. All they were asking me, what is the landlord? I think they had something about people kind of like forcing are they adopting people children whatever they went into the garden there was a hooded slump there they, they they broke the slam just to see what was inside so like after they got everything so then i was now asking them like is everything okay am i in trouble i said no it's, i'm not in trouble it's just the protocol the procedure like i should just relax they reassured me and they made sure i was calm and they left that was my first time experiencing that devastating, terrifying incident. So the second one, the one I shared earlier, I was a bit calm because that wasn't my first time. I was like, oh God, I couldn't even sleep that night. Like I couldn't sleep that night and I couldn't call anyone because these guys, they didn't leave. They stood there for some time. Like, see, the way they were looking for my IDs and everything, like I said before, if I was doing something fishy, whatever, they would have just caught me. The police were not there for me. They were there for the other tenant, for the tenant that wasn't even present in the house. But they invaded my room. They scattered my things looking for an ID. Like, have you lost the purpose of being here? But obviously, it's the protocol, guys. It's the protocol. So just pray that and that all the curtains are good if one person is bad it might affect you if you are not careful or you are not lucky of course if you can have bad curtains or tenants that make um the environment unsafe for you then you must as well think about losing your valuable items living in a share house like there are some times that i go into the kitchen i can't even find my plate it's not like they are still at the place. They can just put the plate in the bin. Maybe the plate is annoying them. They will just put it in the bin. Maybe they just got someone angry and the person just put them in the bin. I mean, it's a pot. Uh, perhaps a rusted pot. It's a plate, an old plate. So sometimes, like, you leave your room unlocked. You just think about what if somebody goes and picks your phone, your laptop, etc. Because if you can have bad tenants, you can as well think about having these stuffs been stolen. This is not a fear. It's a challenge, okay? Living alone in UK, sometimes you just run out of certain essential things and you're living alone. For example, you're cooking, okay? And you run out of salt or whatever. But you're living alone, where do you get salt? If you're living with your partner or living with somebody that you can relate to, like somebody, family, the person can go and get the essential stuff that you are running out to you work as a team. But here are you living alone. I mean, it's very minor, but it can be really stressful sometimes. Another thing is boredom. Like it's so boring living alone in the UK. So, so boring. Like the friends that you can even relate, they work like they, they are workaholics. My friends are all workaholics. I don't even want to mention their names because if they see this video, if I mention their names and they see this video, they will not be happy. They are all workaholics. They don't even, you, you, you can't even go out with them. Okay. So it's very boring living alone in the UK. Living alone in the UK, like living single in the UK is very, very boring. Okay. So that is it. Okay. I hope this video helped us to be mindful and also seek adequate support. We need adequate support living here in the UK. The system is not like the system back home. That is what you have to understand. Okay, please. You don't have to be in the UK to be able to check on us. You can be back home. That is one thing that we need the most. That is the love that we need. You have that back home. You have to give us some. Okay, I hope this has been helpful and i'm hoping that i also get help from making it from this video please i hope um, you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like share comment okay my name is fatima ali if you're new on my channel please consider subscribing if you are a returning subscriber you mean so much to me thank you so much and i'm gonna see you in my next video for now bye